Well, hello you guys. My name is Scott and I'm a farmer. And I farm vegetables and fruit and nuts and flowers and herbs and chickens for eggs and bees for honey. But I also want to just start by showing you a lot of fun stuff up here. And a lot of it's going to have to do with soil. Some people call it dirt. I call it dirt sometimes, but I want you guys to think about soil. And we're going to go through all these fun props from my right to my left. And it'll go real quick, but it's going to be fun. And I think you guys are going to learn something about how to take care of yourself more, how to take care of the planet more. In fact, in fact speaking of the planet, let me look at this. You guys have all seen this. This is our home. This is our home. This is Earth. And we live here in North America, but we got to take care of this. Just like you want to take care of my home that I'm in right now. This is our home for people that aren't even born yet, you guys. Just think of all the kids who aren't even here yet, that we have to make sure we leave them a better world. Okay? So we got to take care of this. Just like you take care of your tummy, we got to take care of the earth. Got to take care of the soil. And I also want you to look at something else, too. I want you to think about a garbage can. And I want you to think about, the next time you look at a garbage can, I want you to realize that half of what we throw away every day, you guys, is 25% food, which breaks my heart, because we got a lot of hungry kids on this world who need food, and we throw away too much food, you guys. 25% food, another 25% of it is paper. Just like this. And if we take food and paper, guess what we're gonna make today, you guys? The magic of compost, more soil. We can actually help build that part of soil. And we're gonna talk about soil in a minute, but I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. I just want you to think about some of the stuff I'm talking about with the globe and the garbage and all these props and how it's going to make you take care of yourself better and take care of our home better, okay? But before we do that, I want you to think about this. Everything you ate today, breakfast, lunch, dinner, in fact, everything on this pizza box, everything, even the box, all of it came from plants. And sometimes when I say that, kids go, wait a minute, Scott, that pepperoni is not a plant. And I say, you're right, but let's think about that. Where did the pepperoni come from? Hmm, well, it came from an animal, and the animal had to eat. What did the animal eat? Well, if you start looking at what the animal's eating, you guys, they're eating plants. Everything we eat starts with plants, but the plants have to eat first. So let's start there. Soil first, then plants, then food, <laughs> and then us. We don't have anything to eat, you guys, unless we take care of the soil first. You can put bad things in your tummy to make you sick. You can put bad things in the soil outside to make the plants sick. We can't do that. Two of my favorite words are help or harm. Are we making choices that are helpful or are we harmful? And I just want us to be helpful, you guys. We have too much hurt. We need to be more helpful every day, okay? So what I'm gonna show you right here on the table is gonna help you, <laughs> speaking of help, help you help yourself and help each other just by doing some simple thinking, okay? So. Let's think about this. I already told you all plants come from soil. The plants have to eat first. The soil outside is like a sponge. It fills up with water. In fact, I have a sponge right here that I just filled up with water. Watch when I squeeze this. Just filled it up. Obviously, when I squeeze it, you're going to see water drip out, right? Just imagine it's raining and raining and raining. Let's imagine that pretty soon the snow is piling up out there, and when the snow melts, it goes into the soil. This sponge can only hold so much water. And then when it gets to a certain point, it just goes, whoop, I can't hold anymore, Scott. So think about that, you guys. Next time you put your foot outside on the soil after a rain, it's gonna be squishy. That's the sponge. That's the sponge of the soil that holds the water, okay? Now what I want you to think about is this. When I want water in my body, I don't go in the shower and put put the shower on my arm. Water does not get in my body 
through the leaves, or it doesn't get in the body, my body through my skin, and the water doesn't get in the plants through the leaves. The water gets in the plant through the water in the soil sponge. And now I went outside to the garden, you guys, and I picked this pepper plant. All the leaves are starting to die because it's cold. But look at these beautiful two peppers on there that are still hanging on, the red one and the green one. The only way we could get those peppers, you guys, is if the soil, see the soil kind of dangling off there and holding on barely? It's hanging on to dear life, to those roots. Those roots are soaking up the water and they're hanging on to that soil. And when I put that soil right there on my fingertip that's got the water on it, I can't shake that off. That soil on my fingertip right there there you go. It's hanging on and hanging on. And when it touches the root, it's like a straw that goes and all the water that's hanging on to that soil that has all the good stuff in it, we call it nutrients. Just like when you put food in your tummy, it goes through your body through the water and blood carrying it. Same thing happens in the soil, you guys. We put good stuff in the soil, like compost I'm going to show you, and it's the food for the food. It's the food that the plant needs. And the only way that this good stuff can get in there is by touching the water. And so when the root comes down and touches that soil sponge and the water hits it, boom. It's like a sponge and it, goes, it gets absorbed all the way through the body of this plant to make the peppers. Or it can make anything. I just went out to the field and took these soybeans out. All of the seeds for these soybeans are inside this little tiny pod right here that we make in Iowa, lots of these. But the same thing happened, you guys. Boom. Root touches soil. Water touches the roots. And the soil goes right up there to make the, the soybeans. So what is soil? Let me real quickly show you. This is really fun to look at, too. You take a mason jar, fill it up about three quarters of the way with soil, top it off with water. If you guys look closely in this jar, you can see I've got water sloshing around in there still. I poked a hole in the top so it can breathe, because remember, I have to have air in my lungs to live, and air has to flow in the soil for the soil critters to live too. The worms, the little bio microbiology critters that you can study, they all need oxygen too. So you shake it all up, we call this the mud shake. Boom, sit it down. Let it go, come back a few weeks later, and you'll see the three main parts of soil. The bottom part, the heaviest part, is sand. Now, when I say sand, I mean just good old sand, just like you see at the beach, right here. I'm just gonna pour that out on the table. We're gonna make a little soil sandwich here. <laughs> the bottom is soil, or sand, rather, and that jar has about almost half sand. So think about that, you guys. Next time you're at the beach, or in a mud puddle, and you have your bare feet, and you step down in the mud, and your toes squish through the mud, you're gonna hit sand at the bottom, okay? And let's go to the top, and then I'll go to the middle. The top is clay. So just like this ball of clay I have here, if you look at this jar, when you do this in school, you're gonna see layer and layer and layer of clay. And in the very middle of this jar of soil, the sand, the clay, and old plants. It's called organic matter. It's just old plants, you guys, like this like leaves. Right now it's fall, all these leaves falling out of the sky. Guess what though? They lay in the soil and then you come back in March or April when all the snow melts and you pick up those leaves and you look at the bottom and they have turned into black gold in the middle of this soil jar. We've got old plants that shrink and shrink and shrink. We call it decomposition in science. It decomposes and shrinks and shrinks and gets down to that level of the soil on the roots, okay? So just think about that. That dangly root has clay in it and sand and old plants that feed the root, that feeds the pepper. So let's go on to how we can help build this. We're not gonna build clay. We can't build clay and we can't build sand. Those rocks that are on Mother Earth, they're the rocks we have. It's a finite resource, that's what we call it. We can't build those rocks. 
but we can build that middle part of the jar. We can build better soil when we add more plants back into the soil. And it's so easy to do, you guys. Just two colors. I want you to think of two colors, browns and greens. Now, when I say green, this is a compost bucket that you can do at home, right under your kitchen sink. When I say green, I don't just mean the color green, like this old pepper plant, or this old pepper. You can also take the color red is considered a green because it's an old plant, okay? This little cherry tomato, it's gotten kind of rotten. I'm not going to eat it, but I don't have to throw it in the garbage. I can put it from garbage can to compost pail. And look when I squeeze that. All the, look at all the water dripping out of that tomato. There's a lot of water in plants, you guys. Okay? So this compost bucket is about 25% greens, old food, right? 75% of the bucket is browns, like paper towel. Who, who knew? You don't have to throw a paper towel away. You can put it in the compost and it's going, it's going to turn into this, you guys. It's magic. It's totally magic. It takes about four or five months. But it doesn't have to be just a color brown like leaves, because leaves go in there too. You can actually take newspaper. And even though it's white, it's called a brown because it's paper and it's called, in, you'll study this in science too. This is nitrogen and carbon, okay? You do those two things, clap, clap it down, if you came back in one day and, and hugged this, you guys, it would be kind of warm. Because when all this stuff starts to shrink, it releases heat. And instead of letting that heat go up in the planet, we hang on to it and make that middle part of the soil jar this beautiful, beautiful black compost for the roots to eat and bring up into their body to make peppers and soybeans and corn and tomatoes and everything you eat. Everything we eat, you guys, it all starts right there. Right there with that black goodness that we can make. I want to thank you so much for letting me spend just a real short amount of time to talk about important, important stuff, you guys. But I always, always want to do one thank you at the very end. And that's to thank my grandma who taught me this stuff. And my grandma, she hasn't been on this planet for a while. But she taught me all this stuff, and she's always right here. She gave me this beautiful tool right here. It's called a hand plow, and it looks like a claw kind of, doesn't it? And you take it in the soil and pull this claw back, and that's when you can put your seeds and your transplants in. Look at this. This is in nature. This time of year when the bucks go out in the woods and they start shedding their antlers. Look at what the Native American Indians used to make. This is a hand plow, just like grandma's hand plow, but the Indians around here used to just put this on a stick and decorate it and use this just like grandma used that. And I, I just bring this to, to you guys to show you, first of all, to thank my grandma, but to also I want you guys to promise me something. I want you to go outside and just don't talk. I want you to just listen. I want you to listen to the leaves. I want you to listen to the birds, and I want you to just look around and see beautiful stuff. Antlers, helicopter seeds, little critters, all of the beautiful stuff in nature that is helping make our food, you guys. And so you can't do this because I'm not with you, but I'm going to put my hand over my heart and make a promise for you. And you can recite it if you want to follow along with me. But here's my promise, okay? I promise that when I see a ladybug, or a butterfly, or a worm, that I won't hurt them, but I will help them back to the soil.